I'm going to walk you through a set of structural steel specifications. You can see right up at the top here that structural steel is in division 5, so 5120 is the typical number. And we're looking at structural steel here. Uh, specifications are usually divided into three parts using uh, as a standard. So part 1 covers general conditions specifically for this uh, scope of work. Part 2 is going to give us the products. So the, the specific information about what is included. And then part three is execution. This gives information on how, uh, how the work should be done. So let's jump back up to the general and, and, and step through this um, section by section. So at the top here, we have a, 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 a summary of the work included here. And what's interesting to see is here is the word furnish and install. So this means that in this scope of work it includes producing the the steel, fabricating the steel, so this the furnishing would be fabricating, and um, and then installing in steel we're looking at erecting steel. So we've got fabrication and erection of steel and then there's a lot of other work that needs to be coordinated with the steel so you can see down here under related work and many of these items are also in Division 5, so you see these here. Typical ones that you'll see on most jobs are going to be things like um, miscellaneous metal, steel. Most steel jobs have metal decking. They do not all have structural steel joists or cold form framing, um, and typically that's not structural. So we go down a little bit further, we talk about the related uh, documents in, in this particular spec section. And then we have reference. And the interesting thing to note here is this is where we're going to find modifications to the Code of Standard Practice. So the Code of Standard Practice is the industry standard for production and fabrication erecting steel. And so in this particular job, there's a bunch of things where, where that language is modified. Next, we're going to get down to submittals. So in, sex, uh, in general conditions, or 1330 in this particular project, we'll talk about the specifics of submitting, the procedures for submitting. In the spec section itself, it's going to talk about exactly what needs to be submitted. So for structural steel, we're looking at shop drawings, and that's the detailed um, shop and erection drawings that we're going to have. And this gives, indicates exactly what needs to be um, shown on those drawings. And then there's, there's different reports. So if we look at this a little closer, what we're going to see is that um, typically for structural steel, we're, we're looking at some design calculations for, for connections, um, mill tests, that's basically the information from the raw steel, and then bolt certification to show that they're in compliance. Next section we're looking at here is quality assurance, and this talks about um, things that may be performance specified, such as you know connections typically in steel are performance specified, which means the contractor is responsible for designing the connections. Um, we also have things that are done in the field and in the shop, such as welder, welder certification here, um, the design engineer, and then there's there's other special requirements. Next, you'll see what the process is for. We're looking at changes on the drawings. If the um, typically in steel, different fab shops are set up to do things in different ways, and so here's the the way that the the um, steel fabricator or steel subcontractor can can ask for um, substitutions in sizes to make it work a little bit easier. So as we continue down through the specification here, um, really important that the that there's a pre-installation conference so everyone understands you know what is uh, what is required by the subcontractor we get down to field measurements verified dimensions of members requiring close erection tolerances or critical in uh, conjunction with this a lot of times when you have existing field conditions they need to be verified as well what we see down here in delivery storage and handling is kind of boilerplate but basically requires that the uh, that the steel fat the steel subcontractor um, coordinates their work with the work of other uh, other trades and that they sequence the work in a way that makes it um, 
expedite erection and minimize field handling. And they're going to do that anyways because that's what's going to save them the most money. So those are general, general conditions specifically for this scope of work. And this needs to be worked with the whole Division I section as well. When we get into products, you're going to see here that this is um, th there is a definition in the AISC Code of Standard Practice of what structural steel is. And here we're very specific. So when we're talking about carbon steel, um, this is where we give the grades. And again, these are industry standards. So typically W shapes are ASTM A992. Um, the rest are usually going to be A36. Um, tubing comes in this grade here, etc., etc. So you can see how how this is where if there was some specialized steel it would be designated right here. If there's high strength steel and this would be specifically um, indicated on the drawing somewhere. So this basically goes through what is covered, what exactly is covered in the spec section. Um, you see when they're welding the type of electrodes to use and then when we're looking at fasteners we're looking at the specs uh, specification for those uh, bolts. It's very important to work the specifications with the general structural notes because the general structural notes will tell exactly um, where you're required to use high strength bolts, where you may use standard bolts, um, and, and where anchor bolts are. And so it, it's, it's very important to make sure that, that, um, that you look at the different. The AISC Code of Standard Practice actually indicates that the drawings take precedence over the specifications, which is different than most other trades. So unless it's uh, specifically noted that that is not the case here, that the, the drawings do take precedence if you run into a discrepancy. So here we're looking at uh, some at the different things. Rebar is listed here, um, but typically if we're, we're talking about rebar that's not shown with the concrete. Rebar that is, is part of um, you know, embedded in concrete uh, reinforcing is usually found in, in Division 3. Um, this particular job is a pool, so it talks about something very specific about stainless steel in the pool. Shear stud connectors are called out, and then this is something a lot of people may miss is, the, is primer here. Now, you go to Division 9 for paint, but this basically shows how that the steel needs to show up with, um, with primer to the job site before it gets its final coat. So moving down here, we can see that some that there are some miscellaneous things not shown here, and so this is kind of the the the, the designer covering themselves. Provide anything else you need to do in order to com to complete the work. So that covers a lot of little bases. So that's the the actual products. Next, we get into fabrication. So fabrication is going to tell us exactly how to um, how to put things together. And again, the uh, where it's silent in this in the specifications, the AISC Code of Standard Practice comes into play. So if we're looking at fabrication here, um, it talks about tolerances. In this particular case, um, it talks about you know how to treat steel that's specific when it's in public view, um, workmanship, and and things like that. Down here, it talks about how we how how the contractor is supposed to do the welding, do the bolting, do the shop cleaning. And most of this, again, is going to be standard practice. But it's really important that you read through this to make sure you don't find something that isn't much more um, detailed or, or requires um, more detail than you'd get in, a, in standard practice because that could end up uh, affecting cost and schedule. And finally, down here, we're talking about shop painting. So up above, we talked about the product um, to use for the shop priming. So here, we're talking about priming. And this tells how thick to put it on. And you'll note, if we go back up, it tells us um, in, the, in the primer section exactly what, what to use. So and depending on the application, these are the different actual um, primers that can be used. And you'll notice many of these have approved substitute. And so there's a whole process in Division 1 that talked about how to get um, an approval of a substitute element. Part 3 talks about execution. So there's a lot of a language here that, that requires the contractors to verify conditions. And so we're looking at 
Um, you know, it's, it's incumbent on the subcontractor to get out and make sure that things are as they expect, it, it, examining the areas and conditions under which, which the work will be done. And here we have things about things talking about the um, preparation of the site. So here it it's required by the steel sub the the steel to retain a surveyor to get the benchmarks, elevation of concrete, etc., and then deliver anchor bolts, base plates, so things that are going to be embedded or built into the structure. And then finally, this is the um, getting getting this set up to the the um, to to get ready to accept the steel. So this may, depending on the general contractor, this may or may not be excluded from their work. However, a lot of times the, the structural steel erector wants to do these so that they have control over them and it helps speed up the work they're doing. Once we're getting into uh, into building the the structural steel frame, we get into the erecting of the steel frame. Um, again, we're looking at just keeping keeping to erection tolerances and here it says specifically comply with the code of standard practice and here we have accept as follows so here's where we would um, override the code of standard practice so the code of standard practice uh, allows for usually much more deviation for instance of um, of columns in vertical and where the locations of the center of the columns are and so this is where the, the tolerances are much tighter. And you'll see a few more details through here. Um, and if these tolerances are, are really tight, it's going to, again, affect the cost of the project. Down here is talking about what happens if you need to do uh, field modifications. And so uh, this would be the RFI process to go through there. And here we're talking about uh, different things like what um, when they can actually start putting the the beams and girders and the concrete um, we're looking at the, the design strength say of concrete or if they're reviewed by the architect or structural engineer of record um, we're looking at a temporary bracing it's the it's the require it's the responsibility of the uh, the steel erector to provide any temporary bracing and they must be removed before when they're no longer needed and finally it talks about how to do the field connection so here is where you'd have anything specific um, uh, talking about where you know in this case where things are exposed to public view uh, and, and etc quality control is another very important thing that you need to look at for structural steel so again there's a survey that's done to make sure that everything's put in place um, and they have to be submitted. That's part of the submittal process. There's testing that has to go on, especially for welding and bolting in the field. And then if there's any uh, need for um, coordinating and getting assistance here, the, the, the testing agency needs to get a full set of the shop drawings, erection drawings, etc. As we go through this, we see a few more places where uh, we have the specifics of what needs to be inspected. So we've got the overall steel inspection, the welding inspection, the bolt inspection, the shear stud inspections. And again, this gives the, the very specificness of that. Finally, uh, you know, there's always a chance that, that the, the priming or galvanizing is going to be um, is going to be damaged slightly during during erection and this provides how to you know clean it up and repair it at the end so it's a very brief overview of how we uh, how to navigate a set of, of structural steel specifications